Hello, my name is Eric Choi, and this is my Omni presentation for History 100. My presentation will be focused on food, class, and daily life in ancient China. Ancient China has a rich history that dates back to 1250 BC. The higher class and the lower slash middle class has a very large gap in practicality in ancient China, which is shown in documents and research. What is interesting is that the gap can be correlated to what the person actually eats. A lot of research has been done to show what the ancient Chinese people ate, but there is no research further that links diet to class. Instead of stopping at the diets, thinking further into their daily lives makes it extremely obvious that food is connected to almost everything that they did. What they ate directly correlates to the economic status and social role that the individual partook in. Ancient, civil ancient civilizations like the Han Dynasty in China prove that there is significance in what their people ate, which correlates to their daily life. First, I would like to go and talk about my research question for my presentation, and then I would like to move on to my primary analysis. And then I would like to move on to my main points of the presentation and move on to um, number four, which is to answer my research question that I presented. And then I'll finally like to conclude and talk about my works inside it. So for my research question, it is, what is the significance of food and diet in an ancient Chinese individual's daily life? And I would like to answer that further after I give context to my presentation. So starting with my main points, I want to talk about what the people actually ate. It is important to first understand what the different social and economic classes were actually consuming in their daily lives. Peasants made up the majority of the population in China during the Han Dynasty. According to Glenn Kucha, a historian that specializes in ancient Asian societies, she said that more than 80% of Chinese were peasants. A minority of peasants claimed ownership of some land. However, most paid rent to landlords. The majority of the peasants were in constant debt because they took in so many loans from landowners and nobles. The minority of these peasants were well off because of their farming job and actually had positive net growth. These peasants could afford oxen to carry the load for them and created marketplaces using their accumulated wealth. It is widely believed that peasants were primarily the least important class in the eyes of the royals and the wealthy families. The peasants primarily ate an extremely bland diet. In the northern parts of China, their diet consisted of dumplings, pancakes, and noodles. In the south, the staple food was rice. For both regions, if a peasant lived near a river, they would primarily catch, sell, and eat fish. Dumplings back in ancient China consisted of a cooked dough with small pieces of leftover meat from a last meal or rice stuffed inside of the dough. Peasants ate wheat and a grain called millet as well. Unlike the common wealthy family, peasants also grew some of their own crops. Many families decided to grow ginger, onion, and garlic to save money. They could also sell the crops to gain more money to survive. The problem was that their farm and land was not even theirs, but the elite or the kings. The peasants were also taxed extremely heavily by the government. John Super says, Often, when it came to time to repay the debt, the peasants had already sold his tools and animals. Some even sold their children into slavery and could not repay the loan. Then, the landowner would take the peasant's land, having him work on it for practically nothing. Being a peasant was extremely harsh and was not a great way of living out a precious life. The elite had a very different diet than the peasantry in ancient China. The wealthy ate the same grains as the peasants, such as rice and millet. They just ate everything in exponentially large portions. They ate a large plethora of meat, such as pork, duck, chicken, goose, and dog. They also ate a lot of greens that included yams, beans, turnips, onions, and garlic. Along with vegetables, the elite had a, the blessing of being able to indulge in fruits, such as oranges, lemons, peaches, and apricots. Another thing to mention is that the wealthy also ate a large amount of fish. Among the fish they ate, a prized delicacy that is still eaten today is a shark. Various soups were made that sustained the shark's fin inside of it, as well as bird's nests, bear paws, and sea slugs. Another thing that is extremely exclusive to this elite was wine and alcohol. 
they would ferment rice and millet to create drinks that were still produced to this day in China and other countries as well. Tea was also an extremely important part of the Chinese diet. In the beginning of tea's origin, it was extremely exclusive to the elites and the top of the social spectrum pyramid. But as it became cost effective and the peasants started to drink it as well. Tea was grown in China from as early as 3000 BC and they started to brew it as a traditional beverage. Dinners and banquets were extremely common for the Chinese. As shown in paintings, scrolls, and pottery, the elite would document their eating habits to brag about how wealthy and stoic they are. Art, where there are huge tables that elite and royal men sat around, with at least 20 plates filled with meat and fruit, is extremely common. As we can see in this painting right here, we see a plethora of men with a bunch of plates and a huge table. So we can see that example straight from this primary source. This information all distills back to what the main thesis of how one's diet can connect to their daily lives. It may be hard to see the implication of what food really means to the ancient Chinese civilization, but there truly is a large gap between the social classes that directly correlates back to food. Many peasants had extremely grueling and difficult lives. They worked nearly every single day of the entire year to supplement themselves and their family. This meant that they had absolutely no break and were physically, emotionally, and mentally drained. They were physically drained from their workload and had a hard time even thinking properly after a long day of farming and towing carts full of vegetables. The peasants also were heavily induced into harsh weathers that included the fright frighteningly scorching sun, extremely dampening storms and rain, heavy dust storms, and the extremely cold. It was a living misery for them every single year. Even a single one of these natural disasters could ruin a peasant's entire life. Their field could be destroyed, their oxen could be killed, or their tiny house could have collapsed. The peasants had nothing to truly live for since they are only working for the owners of the land and their families. Even when they are starving and eating a couple grains every day, they could not stop working because that was their entire daily life. Their shirts and pants were made of scratchy cloths, and their sandals were made of straw that gave their feet infections. When it came to providing for one's family, many people do not take into account how difficult that was. Three generations of a family, the grandparents, parents, and children, usually all lived in the same tiny household. This made it extremely difficult for the father and leader of the household to live with any benefits or blessings. China was a male-dominating society at the time, so the male had a huge power spike and led over the females in the household complex. The roofs of the houses were thatched, and furniture was rele relegated to small wooden benches that can barely fit a child's body, let alone an adult's. An average elite's daily life was luxurious and much more abundant than a peasant's. Instead of the peasants who sparingly ate extremely low amounts of food, the elite piled up a huge table with an unthinkable amount of plates. They lived in a tremendously large wooden house that served as another possession for them to brag about. Roofs were made of customized tiles that were handmade and hand carved. These tiles were more expensive and luxurious because they were built in a curved shape which is much harder to produce in an ancient Chinese setting where there were no machines. Even in a luxurious house, there was a limitation of furniture, just like the peasants. The difference is that there was no furniture by choice for the elite. They loved their gardens and would take regular walks in it to, rel to relish their beautiful house and plants. During the Song Dynasty, there was a change in the social classes. Scholars and students were valued as very important in China, which lifted them in status. These Song Dynasty scholars are more educated and less aristocratic than any of the previous individuals during the Tang and Han Dynasty. The students that went to school were all rich, which means that, which means that they all ate extremely well to stay healthy. Women were the ones in the average Chinese household that had to cook for their husbands and children. In many cases, they also had to prepare meals for their own parents and husband's parents as well. This was an extremely difficult feat for the majority of peasants which is why they stayed in poverty and were malnourished. Now that there is a complete background on both the peasants and the elite, 
It is also imperative to connect these two classes and realize what is proportional. It turns out that the significance beyond the food that each social and economic class eat is profound. Peasants and generic merchants were extremely skinny, and that made their bodies unproductive. Their bodies were extremely weak and fragile, but their workloads do not reflect that. Hundreds of peasants would die every year because they were forced to work every second of the day to provide food for their family and wealth to the landowners. Even when they worked their entire lives away, they could only get a small spoonful of rice and a tiny dumpling filled with scraps for themselves and their families. The lives of a common peasant was a vicious cycle that they could not escape. The elite on the opposite spectrum grew fat because of the amount of food they consumed. Since they loved bringing guests over to their house to brag about how much they possess, they started to stack huge tables with food to impress them. Copious amounts of pottery, art, and portraits during the Han Dynasty showed paintings of royal men that were plump and overweight. Many of these elites were clinically ill and died early due to diabetes. There is a, an indirect correlation that can connect their death to their eating habits. Confucius was quite clear that the purpose of eating was to satisfy hunger, rather than gastron gastronomic indulgence. He himself ate sparingly and carefully balanced his diet between grains and such flavorings as meat or vegetables. He was also fastidious around the freshness of the food he ate and about cleansiness, setting high standards of hygiene for his followers. Although many of them fell sick to their gluttony that was looked down upon, they had happy and easy lives thanks to their money. Food truly did change how all of the Chinese population lived their daily lives. Following the patterns of the diet only provides further insight on who they are as individuals and why they matter to their, in, um, to their environment. Now, as we look at these paintings and primary sources, we can see that all of what I just explained is demonstrated in these paintings. So the first painting is called An Elegant Party and is part, it was created in the Tang Dynasty. And as you can see, there are many men sitting around a huge table with plenty of plates. And it just shows how comfortably and um, gluttonizing the men were. In the second picture, we see a couple peasants that are working in their farms during the Han Dynasty. And in the third painting, we see yet another example of how the elite use their richness and their wealthiness to create elaborate banquets and, um, and feasts to show their guests around. Now to answer the research question, what is the significance of food and diet in an ancient Chinese individual's daily life? Hundreds of peasants would die every year because they were forced to work every single day of the day to provide food for their family and wealth to the landowners. Many of these royals became clinically ill and died early due to diabetes. There is an indirect correlation that can connect to their deaths to their eating habits. There is significance in, in between what food and diet bring into an ancient Chinese person's individual life, whether they are a peasant or a royal slash elite. Now to conclude, the social development of the ancient Chinese in the context of different economic classes and what they ate is reflected upon through the course of their daily lives. Primary sources like paintings and pottery provided a small picture of what their lives were like, but there is nothing that can be taken after that point. The history of China is extremely diverse and plentiful, which is why this presentation exists to teach an aspect of it. Their eating habits instantaneously corresponds to elements of Chinese history, and foods like rice and tea are inter intertwined with what we know as ancient Chinese culture. Knowing the correlating relationship between what a person eats and how they perform in society is crucial to the understanding of their lives. Thank you for watching the presentation. Now, are there any questions?